Hello. <laughs> Good Sunday morning to all of you. Father Ron here at St. Anne Church in Washington, Missouri. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh my, it's like 150 or 170 years old. It sits amidst family farms and open fields out here in the rural Missouri. I love these kinds of churches where, you know, when you walk in, you just know you're in a holy place where you just, you, know, you want to kneel down and pray. I'm on a parish mission along with uh, the sister parish, St. Gertrude's equally beautiful. So this is where I come to you sharing God's word this Sunday. Thank you for joining me. And our gospel today, here it is. It is from, what's it from? Oh, Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said, you shall not kill. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother or sister will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at another with lust has already committed adultery in their heart. Again, you have heard that it was said, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes and your no, no. Anything more is from the evil one. <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> the gospel of the Lord. Friends, 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 do you know what the phrase at least ism means? Probably not because I just made it up. <laughs> but it were, if it were a phrase, it's one that I think Jesus would have used in this scripture today. At least ism, my word, <laughs> is when you justify something wrong that you're doing by comparing it to something much worse. So, for example, when I smoked... Uh, like a half a pack a day. I knew it was wrong and it was bad for me and I should quit, but I just kept saying it to myself to justify it. Well, you know, at least it's not two packs a day like my friend Joe. At least ism. You move some numbers and cheat a little bit on your taxes and justify it by thinking, come on, well, at least I'm not like these people that completely cheat the system. At least ism. <laughs> I may gossip a little and say some bad things about others every now and again, I know, but at least I'm not like Judy who is always bad-mouthing people and making up lies about them. At least ism. <laughs> and in our gospel today, I think it's what Jesus is reminding us to watch out for in our spiritual lives. You know, growing up Catholic, taught by nuns <laughs> in churches much like this, I think we were all taught the same thing, that, that sin is evil. You know, we had a poster when I was growing up of the Ten Commandments. They were larger than life, and they hung above the chalkboard in our classroom growing up. And any time we acted in a way against any of these Ten Commandments, it was a sin, and we had better go to confession, or you know what. <laughs> uh, the Ten Commandments, they were the guiding principles of, of a good Christian Catholic life in God. And while nothing of that has changed, surely, Jesus expanded those commandments to include the activity and, and the realities 
of ordinary living, day-to-day -day life, helping us recognize that it's not just the big stuff that is about sin and drawing us away from God, but even more so, really, the small stuff that builds up, that taunts us on a daily basis. You know, small stuff like gossiping. You know, it's not hurting anyone. Yeah, I know I shouldn't do it, but... Or little white lies or little indulgences, or maybe pornography here or there, or, or being selfish with my time and treasure, and on and on. And we justify those little things by thinking, well, yeah, you know, it's not good, but, but at least I'm not breaking the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I may have said a few bad things about someone, but at least I didn't kill them. That would be wrong. <laughs> I might have indulged in some off-color images or videos, but at least I didn't cheat on my spouse and commit adultery. At least-ism. And then we hear Jesus in this gospel reminding us that, in fact, these smaller kinds of things are very much a violation of God's law because they don't seem so bad or horrible. We don't take them as seriously. And so they're easy to be dismissed. You know, okay, uh, granted, I'm no saint, I agree, but, but at least I'm not like Hitler. <laughs> you know, or those people that have no regard for human life that we read about in the paper every day. I have my faults, sure, but, you know, at least, and on and on. And then Jesus tells us today that, yeah, while you might not have killed anyone, that mean comment that you made online on Facebook to that person or that hateful thing you said in anger to someone recently, it killed their joy. It darkened their spirit by what came out of your mouth. It was like the dagger that was sunk into them. Or while you might have gone to Mass on Sunday and kept the Lord's Day holy, as the commandment says, the choice to indulge in alcohol or sexual misconduct later on in the day, well, that's anything but holy and equally as bad as breaking the commandment itself. Friends, there's a great quote I love from St. John Paul II. And St. Paul John II says this, It is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else satisfies. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. Isn't that lovely? He is the happiness you're searching for. Jesus, he is our goal, our, our destination. Sin is the detour. It's the U-turn from that place. So, friends, I may add... If I may, <laughs> let me add a little bit to what the nuns taught us years ago about sin. Sin is anything that pulls us away from that happiness that Pope John Paul II spoke about, from that beautiful encounter with Jesus in our lives, in our thoughts, our desires, the way we live our lives. Anything that turns us from that is sinful. 
Because the reality is that most of us probably haven't murdered anyone, you know, or committed adultery and the like. And yes, that would definitely pull us away from God. But so do all those little things that can touch our lives on a daily basis. The small things, you know, that we justify because, because they don't directly hurt anyone or compared to someone else, it's not so bad. And while that may be true, they add up. They extinguish just a bit of the light that shines when we dream of happiness. And that's why at the beginning of every Mass, we have what is called the penitential rite. You know, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, followed by the forgiveness of God of those sins that we confess at the beginning of every Mass. Before we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we're made clean, <laughs> refreshed in spirit, so that we can begin again in a new way. That's why it's there at the beginning of every single Mass. And we have it there because of those many sins, those at least isms, if you will, that we struggle with on a daily basis, really that left unchecked darken our dreams of happiness, take us off the path to God. So, friends, I encourage you today, join me, to reflect on just one of those recurring at least isms in your life. We all have them. The thing that keeps tripping you up and, and drawing you away from a life of blessing. If we ask, the mercy of God forgives us. But even more importantly, it offers the grace and the promise that we can overcome it. And, and if you're like me, <laughs> it might be a long, slow process of overcoming it. But, you know, that's what journeys are all about. You know, Mother Teresa, she's got that line, Jesus doesn't want perfection from us. He wants desire. And I have that. I'm sure so do you. And sometimes, you know, that journey... Now, sometimes it's more important than the destination. What is it that you want to offer every time you go to Mass to say, Lord, have mercy? God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining me at St. Anne's in a beautiful place. May God's Spirit be with you now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Here we